Michael Zena and I am a student midwife at the Midwifery College of Utah as well as a nationally registered EMT. Today I will be discussing why pelvimetry exams can provide useful knowledge for labor and delivery and I will demonstrate how to perform this type of exam. Before we begin discussing pelvimetry, it's important to discuss pelvic shapes. There are four common pelvis shapes found in birth and individuals, and each pelvis shape is affecting labor and delivery differently. The most common pelvis shape is called the gynoid pelvis. This pelvic shape is found in roughly 50% of birthing individuals. The inlet of the pelvis has a nice oval shape. The mid pelvis area located between the ischial spines is adequate in size. This means that there is enough room for a baby to pass through without any troubles, ideally. The sacrum is wide and relatively short. It slopes backwards with a deep curve from the sacral promontory to the coccyx. The side walls of the pelvic brim are straight and parallel to each other. The ischial spines are not prominent and the pubic arch is wide and round. You can expect to fit roughly two fingers in width in the pubic arch of a gynecoid pelvis. The next most common pelvic shape is called the anthropoid pelvis. This pelvis type is seen in roughly 25% of birthing individuals. The inlet of the pelvis is shaped as a long anteroposterior oval. The mid pelvis is long in diameter. The sacrum is also long as well as being narrow. The side walls are straight and the ischial spines are variable. The pubic arch will either be normal in size, similar to the gynecoid pelvis, or it can be relatively narrow. The third pelvic shape type is referred to as the android pelvis. This pelvis shape is found in about 20% of birth and individuals. The inlet of this pelvis type is heart shaped. The mid pelvis diameter is reduced in size. The sacrum is typically flat, long, and narrow with a forward incline. The side walls are convergent and the ischial spines are prominent. The public pubic arch is both narrow and deep. The last pelvis type is called the platypoid pelvis. This is by far the least common pelvis type, seen in only 5% of birthing individuals. The inlet is a long, transverse oval shape. The mid pelvis is short in diameter. The sacrum is wide deeply curved, and more often than not, sharply angulated with enlarged sacral bones. The side walls are parallel and straight. The ischial spines are variable. The pubic arch is usually very wide and flattened. Often, three fingers can fit in between the pubic arch of a platypoid pelvis. By performing a pelvimetry exam, we as providers can have a deep understanding of how our client's pelvis is shaped and how we can best assist them in a successful vaginal delivery. Performing a pelvimetry exam is a six step process. I'm going to show you today on my trusty pelvic model, each step, step by step. So. In clinic, you would begin by donning proper PPE and receiving the client's consent. Upon doing that, the provider, in this case today would be me, will insert their pointer finger and their middle finger into the vaginal opening, leaving the thumb hooked on the outside, outside by the vulva. So stick that right there, hook it on there, and then you're going to reach into the vagina with the hopes of making contact with the sacral promontory. Now, the goal of this is to try to understand the width of the inlet, which is from here to here. This is where the baby enters into the pelvis. I know for a fact, because I've measured that when I do such, that I have a reach of 15 and a half centimeters. And so that gives me the idea on this pelvis that the inlet is roughly, I'd say 15 centimeters from front to back. And then your step two would be to rotate your hand to where your two fingers then make contact with the back of the sacrum, like that, like such, and you will then run your fingers down the length of the sacrum from the promontory down 
towards the coccyx. This is to assess the width and the arch of the sacrum. Let's see. Then step three would be to take your fingers back up the sacrum and then to run them along the sides of the pelvic brim and the side walls to assess if they are straight and parallel to each other. You will then take your fingers following the curve of the side wall and you'll work your way down towards the ischial spines, which are right there. You will then assess the width of the midline. So as there, you can see it's from here to here of the ischial spines and you can also assess if they are prominent. This is really important because this is going to be the tightest spot that the baby is gonna go through upon being delivered. And so if baby cannot pass through the midline, um, it can cause some issues, as you can imagine. That would probably lead in some sort of um, assistance to get the baby out. So once you assess the midline or the mid pelvis points, you will then continue on by moving your fingers down towards the pubic arch. So you'll wrap it around here and you'll end up back at the arch where you can assess the width of the arch. See, I can fit my two fingers in this pelvis model roughly. And you can assess the angle between the two bones. Sometimes it's shorter, sometimes it's wider depending on the pelvis type. And then the last step of the pelvic tree exam, you'll move your hand out of the vagina and you will close your fist as such. And you can measure your fist from these points to see the width of it so that when you're performing this, you have roughly an idea of the sizing. And you will place your hand on the outside of the vagina next to the sits bones or the pelvic outlet and assess the width from these two points, here to here. So my fist is roughly, I believe, eight centimeters, which is a pretty average size for the pelvic outlet. So upon completing these steps, this will give you as the provider a very clear understanding of your client's pelvis and give you a possible prediction of any complications that could arise during labor and delivery due to the size and shape of their pelvis.